dear friends today we have to discuss about another type of crystal field splitting and today we have square planar complex with us in the last two classes we have studied about the crystal field splitting in octahedral and tetrahedral complexes but today it is square planar complex actually coordination number of tetrahedral as well as square planar complexes are four and that of octahedral complex is six but actually in explaining the structure tetrahedral and square planar complexes do not have any direct relation but the structure of square planar complexes can be explained from the end of octahedral complexes at first you have to think about the shape of octahedral complex how the ligands approach the central metal ion in octahedral complex how these ligands are capable to produce crystal field splitting in octahedral complex after that you can slowly come to the splitting of square planar complex as we said octahedral complexes in octahedral complexes metal ion is surrounded by six ligands two ligands through each axis two ligands through x other two y axis and the remaining two through the z axis but in square planar complex actually we have only four ligands so really we want to remove two ligands from octahedral complex then six can be changed to four in left side you can see an octahedral complex having six ligands through three axis x y and z respectively x axis this one y axis this one and z axis this one you can see the ligands also two three four five and six ligands now coming towards the central metal and keeping a particular distance from the metal which actually we call it as bone length now we are going to remove two ligands that are the ligands which are present on z axis we are now i mean we are now removing z axis itself along with two ligands in that axis so in the right hand side you can see a missing of these two ligands this and this along this x sorry z axis okay when these two ligands are removed along the x axis what actually happen is that the remaining four ligands the remaining four ligands which are in x and y axis come more close to the central metal here bond length is less than that in octahedral complex they come close to the metal atom when they come close to the metal atom there will be higher repulsion between the lone pair of ligand and the electron in the metal since we have removed two ligands along the z axis any d orbital having z component that means dxz dyz 
and dz square these three orbitals have z component which is clear from their name itself these three orbitals experience less repulsion since there is no ligand in z axis they don't have much repulsion from the approaching ligands at the same time dx square y square and dxy they do not have z component they have only x and y component so the other four ligands actually approaching through x axis and y axis so the orbitals dx square y square and dxy experience greater repulsion than they experienced in octahedral environment so the energy of these two orbitals i mean dx square y square and dxy those do not have any z component increases to greater extent while the energy of other three dxz dyz and dz square having z component will be reduced greater extent that kind of a splitting pattern can be seen in square planar complex as the result of the removal of two ligands from the octahedral complex <coughs> you can see it clearly this was the degenerate orbitals in free metal ion free metal ion this is our hypothetical condition if all the six ligands in octahedral environment repel the d orbitals to same extent uh, we will get a degeneracy again but at a higher energy level but it is a hypothetical condition no possibility to have so so you can see a splitting like this t to g three orbital and e g two orbital what are this dxy sorry d to g they are dxy dyz and dxz among this three dxy among this three dxz and dyz they have z component since there is no ligand in z axis definitely their energy will re be reduced due to less repulsion so out of the three two will go down dxz and dyz as they have no appreciable repulsion from the ligands while dxy two will go like this and dxy energy increases to this level since other four ligands approach them more close and repulsion will be high in eg level also we have dx square y square and dz square dx square y square experience greater repulsion from the four ligands coming through x and y axis so their energy increases but dz square they have no they have no appreciable repulsion since we have no ligand in z axis so they will come down so this kind of a splitting pattern can be seen in square planar complex in the last two structures four tetrahedral and octahedral we had only two energy levels lower energy level t2g and higher energy level eg for octahedral system and for tetrahedral system it was e at the lower level and t2 at the higher level but in square planar complex we have four energy levels lowest one is this one and highest one is this one in between these two we have dxy and dz square so we can see three energy gaps delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 so total energy is delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 definitely this energy gap is much greater than octahedral splitting so lowest splitting is in tetrahedral then octahedral and a still higher value can be seen in square planar complex 
relation delta s p means delta square planar or square planar splitting is equal to 1.23 delta o means it is 1.23 times of octahedral splitting that was about the crystal field splitting of various structures so i think you have understood what is crystal field splitting and how it happens in various structures this is really the interaction of ligands or ligand lone waves with the central metal electron the mutual repulsion between these two electronic system will leads to the splitting of d and d orbital energy system energy now what factors can influence crystal field splitting <coughs> first one is nature of ligand we have two kinds of ligand strong field ligand and weak field ligand those ligands which can leads to greater splitting between energy levels by greater interaction with metal ion electron is called strong field ligands those who can make only little or very small splitting between t2g and eg or e and t2 is called weak field ligands this is uh, an approximate calculation uh, this is not a universally accepted one because from metal to metal or from for the same metal itself when oxidation number changes there will be a small change in the nature of ligand a weak field ligand can act as strong field ligand in higher oxidation number so it is an approximate order we can arrange the available ligands in the increasing order of their splitting power depending on their splitting power ligands can be arranged like this and this series is known as spectro chemical series spectro chemical series i minus lowest splitting that means weak field ligand as we move towards the right the crystal field splitting power increases or strength of the ligand increases and co is the strongest ligand which is a neutral ligand so we are arranging ligands from weakest to strongest splitting power ligand this arrangement is called spectrochemical series you have to by heard it and you may be asked about spectrochemical series in your exams from i minus to water we are considering their weak ligands or weak field ligands and from isothiocyanate to carbon monoxide we have strong field ligands as i said earlier this is not a final order there may be some variations also depending on many other factors even though we can consider it as spectrochemical series and we can make an approximate calculation about the strength of the ligand whether it is strong or weak so first factor is nature of ligand when strong field ligand interact with central metal ion there will be a big splitting or large splitting can be seen for strong field ligand for weak field ligand it is a small splitting so when the strength of the ligand increases splitting gap also increases when cobalt produce complex with ammonia and cyanide ammonia is a ammonia is where is ammonia ammonia is less stronger than cyanide so cyanide complex will have higher splitting while ammonia complex have lower splitting 
Next factor is oxidation state of central metal ion. For a central metal ion, we are always expecting to have positive oxidation number. Central metal ions have positive oxidation number. When the oxidation number or positive oxidation number of central metal ion increases, they can strongly attract ligand towards it or ligand can approach more close towards a central metal. When they approach very closely to the metal ion, there will be greater repulsion between electrons in metal and electrons in ligand. So, there will be greater splitting. For example, hexa aqua ion 2 complex, hexa aqua ion 3 complex. Here oxidation number of ion is plus 2, here it is plus 3. Here attraction of ferrous ion on water is less than attraction of ferric ion on water. So due to higher attraction of ion towards the water, there will be greater splitting, but here it is lower splitting. We can see it from the frequency. It is 10 for double zero centimeter inverse, but here it is 13 seven double zero centimeter inverse. Here energy gap is high. High energy gap can be seen between lower energy and higher energy level due to greater splitting. Third one is transition series to which metal belongs. In D block, we have mainly three series 3D, 4D and 5D series. <coughs> In 3D series, example for cobalt 3 plus crystal field splitting gap or energy gap is 23000 or 23000 centimeter inverse for 4D. 4D series example rhodium energy gap is still bigger here for iridium it is higher as we move down the group from 3d to 4d then 4d to 5d number of protons inside the nucleus increases and shielding power of d orbitals or d electrons decreases therefore central metal can strongly attract ligands towards it due to increase in effective nuclear charge or increase in nuclear charge the central metal ion is capable to attract ligands more strongly towards it when they attract more strongly ligands definitely come close to the metal ion and there will be greater repulsion and greater splitting that is natural that is the transition series effect on the crystal field splitting Next one is geometry. Splitting gap is dependable on shape also or structure geometry also. Delta T is less. Delta O is greater than delta T and delta SP is still bigger. The relation is delta T equal to 4 by 9 delta O. Delta SP means square planar splitting is 1.23 delta O. Next, for any DX system except D5 and D10, they have, they have CFSE of 0. D5 and D10 is always CFSE 0. So, except these two system D1, D2, D3, D4, D6, D7, D8 and D9, the crystal field stabilization energy of delta uh, octahedral complex is always less than the crystal field energy of tetrahedral complex. So, octahedral geometry is found to be more stable than tetrahedral geometry as they have small energy, lower energy. Lower the energy, higher will be the stability. At the same time, if we consider D9 system, it can have two configuration. 
in octahedral this configuration is T 2 G 6 E G 3. For tetrahedral system it is E G 4 and T 2 G 5. Here energy is minus 0.6 delta O or minus 6 d q. Here it is minus 0.4 delta t. So, comparing to octahedral tetrahedral system, octahedral system is more negative. So, it is stable. When we compare square planar complex, this is minus 1.22 delta s p crystal field splitting is minus 1.22 still lower than octahedral complex this is a higher value this is a lower value so octahedral complex is stable but in square planar field it is much less minus 1.22 is still a lower value so d9 system always prefer to have a geometry of square planar so if you have asked such a question while sorry why D9 system always prefer to be in square planar shape. So, you have to point out these facts for a D9 system. We can calculate CF or C4 all the three conditions. Among these three conditions, square planar complex have lowest energy. So, system always prefer to acquire that shape where it will get lowest possible energy or highest stability. Thank you.